speak to your people tonight. Let your word be etched upon the tables of their hearts. That the words will grow. The truth will grow. That it will be stabilized by the things that they hear. We bless you, our God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for what I will call your perseverance. I know the traffic out there has been quite challenging. Notwithstanding, we overcome these things. If you understood all that we've been talking about, that there are crocodiles that you must of necessity overcome to cross to the other side. None of these things should by any means draw us back. And tonight, by the power of the Lord, we are going to the part six of returning to the basics. Monday, you saw 2020 vision. Tuesday, you saw looking at our God. Wednesday, you heard rapture being initiated. Thursday, you understood from the word of God, judgment, particularly as it relates to the judgment of nations. Yesterday, we showed you running well. The necessity for all of us to recognize the nature that we take on at this time. Jesus, as we read from Isaiah chapter 52, from verse 12 or 13 thereabouts, he was called my servant. And when the opportunity came for men to impose upon him kingship, he never forgot that at this point in time, I am what? I am a servant. And this is a point that Christendom itself has missed. If we are conforming with the image of the Lord, this is not the time of our glory. Hello. I hope you understand that. This is not the time of our glory. Our glory is to come. And those who ally themselves to the world at this time in the seeking of the applause of men to be reckoned according to the status that men give, they have missed the point. And it's a dangerous place to be because it's one of those things that the enemy is throwing at you to struggle and struggle and catch what the time does not even permit you to have. We said very clearly to you, human beings have a major difficulty in recognizing greatness other than in power, popularity, and in wealth. Take that to the bank. It's very, very plain. Everyone loves the accolade. You need to be careful. We showed us the connection between sacrifice and service to the Lord to glory. Tying that up to the things that Pastor Andrew spoke to when he talked about the rapture. And we finished yesterday, albeit in a very horrid manner, we finished running through those rewards. I know I didn't do justice to that. But you will have the opportunity, you have had the opportunity of being taught concerning rewards. That's why I took the liberty. But the most important elements I have again explained to you. Tonight, understanding the sequence, looking for the blessed hope. Understanding the sequence, looking for the blessed hope. In John 14, verse 1 and verse 2. The Lord made an open declaration to his people. Let when he said, your... let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go to prepare a place, I will do what? I will come again. The second coming of the Lord Jesus is a certainty because he spoke it with his own mouth. Amen? Whether men choose to forget or choose to ignore it, whether churches are tired of waiting, it does not take away from that fact of what Jesus said that I am going to do what? I am going to come again. Praise the Lord. But it's not only in the New Testament that he was saying it. Anyone who understood the prophecy that was spoken in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto yes. the meek. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. If you compare that scripture to the time that he entered the temple as a 12-year-old and took the scroll from the hand of the people, you will find that this same scripture that was quoted here was what is quoted, but he stopped it at a point. He did not fully quote this. He stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord. Didn't talk about the day of vengeance because the day of vengeance had not come. The day of vengeance related to the time he was going to do what? He was going to come again. So, right from the Old Testament, the Lord had had it clearly laid out that men should know of those who are studying the word or waiters upon of his coming to understand very clearly that yes, he came and he will come again. He came until the acceptable year of the Lord. And by the grace of God, I will deal with the acceptable year of the Lord. I've taught it in different congregations around Nigeria and in South Africa. I don't know why I've not done it here. But if you've listened to the tapes, you probably have had. Because the issue of acceptable year of the Lord dates back to the, to the days of Moses. And the Jews understood what Jesus was speaking here when he spoke about the acceptable, acceptable year of the Lord, that he was talking about freedom from the bondage of sin. Freedom from the bondage of slavery. We were slaves to sin. When he spoke about the acceptable year of the Lord, he was simply speaking that at this time, I have come to set men free. Praise the Lord. But there are other dimensions of the acceptable year of the Lord which are relevant to us now. That every day, every day, every day, we are seeing that end and that transition coming. But that's not our, that's not our subject for today. But just emphasizing to us that the word of the Lord from the Old Testament to the New made plain that Jesus will definitely do what? He will come a second time. Now that second coming of the Lord happens to be in two phases. Amen? And once, I think it's either one of the tips that Pastor Tokes shared of um, Brother Derek Prince. I do not remember precisely which of, the, or which of the ministrations. But you will find that there was a parallel that the Lord demonstrated to his people in the Gospel of St. John which I'm going to read to you for you to see the pattern that the Lord laid down in a way that we can understand how the two faces, how they come. We are speaking about understanding the sequence. Amen? Can you give me John? Um, that's John, John, John chapter 11. Give me from verse 17. And when Jesus came, this was a story of when Lazarus died. All right? They had told him, oh, your friend Lazarus has died, and so on and so forth. He found that he had lain in the grave four yes. days already. Yes. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem. Yes. About 15 furlongs off. Roughly two miles. Yes. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. 
Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary said, I want you to still, don't be in a hurry. I want you to see the specific things here. Jesus had not gotten to the place. All right? The first time that Martha had, Martha left where she was and went to meet Jesus, where Jesus was gone. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, she went away, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came and unto she him. she arose quickly and went to where Jesus was. Now, nobody has ever wondered why was it that Jesus spoke about resurrection at this point in time, in all of his ministry. It was important to tie this to that end point in terms of his second coming. For the resurrection of Lazarus was a typing of the things that will happen in that last day. But before Jesus will get to the point where he was going to resurrect Lazarus in the tomb, Mary and Martha had already gone to do what? They went to meet Jesus. The first phase of the second coming of the Lord is the rapture. Let no one deceive you that there is no rapture. The evidence abounds in the word of God. And that's why you heard the men of old in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, when Paul then said, The Lord himself shall descend, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. He echoed the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Where he said, in a moment, in a, moment, in in a, a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The trump here is the Lord himself, no other angel. The Lord himself calling the people to himself. And if we understand this, we will do well. And the second, the second part, or the second phase, of this second coming of the Lord is actually the time when his feet actually touch Mount Olives physically when all eyes are going to see him. Amen? Are you following me? Because these things are necessary for you to be grounded in what you believe. I asked you on Monday when we started, is it all going to end here? Why the confusion? Why the struggle to say, oh... I am going to possess Victoria Island. I am going to possess, for, by the way, if you want to possess Victoria Island, Victoria Island will sink. I just said that by the way. For those who want to possess and possess and possess and possess, you better know what you want to possess. And if you get this understanding, you will begin to, to begin to see why we are saying focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. I want to go deeper into this. For you to understand the things that were spoken in the book of Revelation. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 1. Anyone who is going to understand the sequences that have been laid down in the book of Revelation needs to see the three legs on which that revelation actually stands. 
In verse 19, I believe. Can you? Um, right, 19. I hope I'm right. Write these things. Number one, which thou has what? Number one is what you have seen. And I'll show you what he has seen. Number two, the things which are. Number three, the things which shall be hereafter. What was it that the Lord was referring to in saying, write these things which thou hast seen? If you back up in that chapter, chapter 1 to like verse 10, um, I hope. Verse 12. Verse, back up to verse 12, yes. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I uh, saw seven golden candlesticks. Yes, note the words there. What did he see? He saw seven golden candlesticks, yes. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his ears were white like wool, like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He saw seven candlesticks, and he saw the almighty God himself. And he recorded it. He saw him in the fullness of his glory. So in that chapter 1, from verse 12 to verse 9, 17 that you have read, you captured what he saw. But what were the things which were in that time? The things which were in that time were the seven church ages that were recorded in chapters 2 and chapters 3 when he began to speak about the church of Ephesus all the way down to the Laodicean church. Those were the things that were. I don't want to go through the seven church ages. How many of you have heard about the seven church ages here? I'm not talking about the fathers. Let me see your hands. Because this is going to tell whether we need to go through these things again. This is less than one third of the people who are sitting here. What shall we do now? Huh? We'll revisit it. If you don't know these things, how can you stand? Praise the Lord. We will not give up. You must make it. You must, <laughs> you have to make it. Amen? Amen? And when these things are being done, don't be absent. <laughs> don't be absent. Because these are the things that we have eaten, digested, even seen the errors in those who taught them in a way that you can put things in proper balance. So the things that he saw, the things that were, now, what were the things that were going to come? You'll find, he then began to take it from chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4, yes? And then he said, after this, I looked, and I beheld a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were what? A trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. If you compare that to what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it was what? What did he say? 
We read it now. I wanted you to connect those two verses, please. The voice of the archangel, the trump of God. The voice of the archangel, the trump of God. And the things that we read concerning when God spoke to John in chapter 1, you will see that his voice was like the voice of a trumpet. So we see in this Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, a typing of the calling up of the saints, of the rapture which he spoke about. Praise the Lord. John was called into heaven. Revelation chapter 4 verse 2. He was immediately in the spirit before the throne of God. The same language that you find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12 verse 52 that believers are changed in the twinkling of an eye because he suddenly assumed a spirit form when he was called into heaven. Now when you get to verse 8 of Revelation chapter 5, 8 and 9, very quickly, you will see what then happens when the church is taken up. Verse this eight. scripture begins to speak to that. And All right? when he had taken the book, yes. the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them ups and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And and the song, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. So you see the church right in the front of the throne of God. Amen? The church right in the front of the throne of God. Now, when it goes further, every creature which is in heaven and under the earth, and on earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb of forevermore. Yes? And the four beasts said, and the four and twenty elders fell down, worshipped him, and live, live it forever and ever. Now, you will wonder, all the angels that are spoken to here, they are speaking about angels. They didn't speak about men. You need to connect with what Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 30. In the context, when they were asking him, a man married a wife, and then the first man died. The woman married the second one, and then the second husband died. And then they asked him, now that she's in the seventh or the fifth one, whose wife is she going to be in heaven? What was the answer of Jesus? Look at the way he puts it. In heaven, for in the resurrection, they neither marry or are given in marriage, but are what? Are exactly as the angels. Many times when you could, I say this as angels. Nonsense. This scripture is very specific. In the resurrection, in the rapture, in the transition, in the manner in which John was called up, Everyone that is called up because he said we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We will be changed. And you then take up an angelic nature. Because what you will see in heaven is not flesh and blood. Paul said, flesh and blood cannot do what? Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I need to emphasize this because there's so much even amongst those who believe so much lack of clarity in terms of understanding and that's why we are taking time to go through this understanding the sequence in the fifth chapter is very important in understanding the conclusion of the first phase of the Lord's coming 
In what we read, the church is before the throne of God. Their location being before the throne of God is extremely important. Because later on, you will see what is spoken concerning the souls which are under what? Under the altar. Different set of people. The believers are with the Lord Jesus before any judgment begins to pour on the earth. And when I speak about before any judgments, we're already going through some judgments now. The pre, uh, the, the, the foretaste of judgments. We're already seeing it everywhere. When Boris Jens, Johnson wins an election, England, Russia, ready, Latin, Rogo. England is about to see uh, Rogo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The man will bring Brexit and will take Britain, Britain to the level of poverty that they never imagined would happen. That's not our subject. Praise the Lord. When the Lord allows us to speak concerning the judgment of the nations, patterned on the, on the things that are written in the book of Isaiah, these things will come into view. All of the issues that you are seeing around the world. First it was in Colombia. Then it was in Singapore. Then it went to Iran. When is it going to get to Nigeria? Pray for peace and stability in this country. Praise the Lord. Because it's going around. It's going around. It's going around. The believers are with the Lord before any judgments begin. And no verse in the book of Revelation indicates that during the judgments, people are added to those before the throne. I haven't seen a verse. And the fathers in the house who are students of the scriptures, if you have seen one, I'm, I'm glad to, to learn from it. That during those judgments, that there's any verse that shows any person being added to those standing before the throne. The church is complete. In Revelation chapter 5, the first phase of the Lord's second coming is nearly complete. When you get to Revelation chapter 6 from verse 9 to verse 11, please, quickly. And when he had opened the fifth seal, yes. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for yes. the word of God yes. and for the testimony which they held. Yes. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, you can see being under the altar is definitely different from being before the throne. Two different groups of people. But what took these people to this point? Those who were killed for the testimony which they held. And I'm saying to those of you who are saying, okay, we understand that tribulation is coming. We will face tribulation. God help you if you want to face tribulation. God help you. Because you have no guarantee that you will not take the mark, the beast, the mark of the beast. What were the things that happened for the word that was spoken, wait until the rest of your brethren be killed. We see that very clearly shown to us in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Yes. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. I'm and touching, I saw thrones. I'm touching these things for you in a way that you also can go back and check. And yes. I saw thrones, yes. and they sat upon them, yes. and judgment was given unto them. Yes. And I saw the souls of them that were bearded for the witness of Jesus. Exactly the same words that you read in Revelation chapter 5, chapter 6, verse 9. They were killed for the testimony that they held. Here again, you are seeing them. So they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God. Yes. And which had not worshipped And the they beast. had not done what? Worship the beast. In other words, these ones were there when the beast was fully manifest. When the man of sin was fully out there. 
who will speak blasphemous things against the Lord. And if you want to further understand that, go to Revelation chapter 13. Because remember where we started. The things which thou hast seen, the things which are, the things which are ended in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, with the Laodicean church. And the things which were to be are the things we are dealing with now. Revelation 13, 7. Yes. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. He made wars with the saints. And to overcome them. Yes. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Please, don't miss these words. If power was given to him, and you say you want to pass through as a Christian, you want to pass through the, river, um, the tribulation, What's your chance? Power was given to him over all kindred, tongues, and nations, yes? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship uh, him. All that dwell upon the earth are going to worship him, yes? Whose names are not written in the book of Whose life? Whose names are not written in the book of life? Of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yes. If any man have, it, have an ear, let him hear. That one, that one on the line, I'm going to come back to it because it's also generated com, com, confusion amongst many. If any man hath an ear, let him hear. This was not the way he spoke to the churches. If it was to the church he was speaking, he always added, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. So, obviously, he wasn't speaking to the church here. Amen. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Yes. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Now, this translation is a bit wobbly. Give me this translation in New Living, New Living uh, uh, NLT. In NLT. NLT. It says, anyone destined for prison will end up in prison. Wake her up. What do you do to her? Praise the Lord. Anyone who is destined for prison will be what? And anyone destined to die by this word. You can see it's a bit different from the way King James put it. So you will see people are going to go to prison. People are going to be killed. Wait for that now. When the Lord gave you a carte blanche. To live right, to focus on him, to love him, and you will escape these things. And then you are making younger. You have just gone to Oyo. I hope you <laughs> praise the Lord. You understand that? When I say you have gone to Oyo, what does it mean? On your own. You just are on your own. You cannot say you have not been taught. You cannot continue to perpetuate iniquity and expect that. That's what I said about developing the evil eye. Praise the Lord. Can you finish that? This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. Mm. Now, when you, at the beginning of, I think, that portion that you read in Revelation 20 verse 4, because I need to explain something to us here. Verse 4. Yes, and I said, saw thrones. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them. Now you need to understand here from where Louis taught us on, um, on Thursday. When you saw thrones, you will need to understand that the different facets of thrones at this point is not just one. Amen? What Louis showed us from Revelation, uh, sorry, Matthew chapter 25, verse 32, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, judging the sheep and the goat nations. Right? You remember that. Now you also need to understand from Revelation chapter 3, verse 26 of verse 32. 20, yes. To and he said, overcometh. to him that overcometh, will I, grant will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame, and I am set down with my father 
in his throne. So there is a place for those who are overcoming or who are overcomers to also sit on the throne. Now when Jesus was speaking to his disciples in Matthew chapter 13, if you'll give me that scripture. Matthew 13, hmm. No, Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Matthew chapter 19. Verse 25. Yes. When his disciples heard it. Now, when the disciples of Jesus, you know, they had been arguing amongst themselves, right? And Jesus then said. They were exceedingly amazed and say, saying, who then can be saved? Mm -hmm. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. But with God, all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we are forsaking all. And followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That you, you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne. When the Son of Man shall sit in his throne of glory. Ye and also, you saw how Louis traced the scriptures to show the throne of glory as being the throne of his father, David. So... Speaking here, when he shall sit on the throne of David, ye also shall do what? Shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging who? The twelve tribes of Israel. So in the understanding that we see concerning, and I saw thrones, you understand the different dimensions or facets of that time. Jesus judging the sheep and goat nations, the, apostle, the apostles of the Lamb, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, and also those who overcame, judging those who related to Christendom, particularly these ones who had their heads cut or who were killed, and so on and so forth. Are you with me? I've given you the scriptures so that you can also go and search these things yourself. Louis dealt exhaustively with a portion about goats and sheep nation. I've shown you the scripture concerning thrones again, regarding the apostles, the apostles of the Lamb dealing with the Jews, and then the overcomers also doing what? Dealing with those who are under the altar. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. It's important for us to get this as we move forward on these things. I said three, three different facets happening at the same time, which the Lord come, when the Lord comes back to the earth. And those scriptures I have given you, Matthew 19, 25 to 28, relating to the apostles of the Lamb judging Israel, Matthew 25, 31, relating to the Lord judging the goat and sheep nations, and Revelation 20, verse 4, tied to the promise of judgment of those under the altar by the Lord himself, by, by, by those who are overcomers. Praise the Lord. Now, we press forward here, and I, I, I wanted you to see, I'm clearing the confusion in the scripture that he said, when the Lord said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. You will find that before the church, before the church, when Jesus spoke about he that hath an ear, let him hear, he just cut it forth at that point. An example is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 15. He that hath ears to hear, yes. let him hear. Yes. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? He didn't go beyond he that hath an ear, let him do what? Let him hear. Again, after the church is taken to heaven, Standing in his throne, as you find in Revelation chapter 13, verse 9, which you read, he said again, He that hath an if any man have an ear, let him do what? Hear. So clearly, before the church was born, he used this diction. After the church was taken away, he used the same diction. He never added. It's only when the church was, when he was speaking to the church, he added to it, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Have I lost anybody? 
Have I lost anybody? Are you clear? I, I, I have not gone the normal way of just running through these things. Because it's important that you understand the sequence. Let's go on further. The book of Revelation continues to document the judgments and then came to the final one, which is the destruction of Babylon. This is the world's religious, political, and economic system. After all this destruction, the Bible once more focuses on the church which is now, which is now in heaven. Now, this is an area that we often gloated over. When in Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 to verse 9, yes? And I heard as it were the mm. voice of a great multitude. Yes. And as the voice of many waters. Yes. And as the voice of mighty thunderings, mm. saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, blessed are they which are, which called, are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, These are the true saints of the eternal God. I've said many scriptures. Now this is Afalabi's opinion that I'm telling you here. All right? I believe with all my heart that the Bema, the judgment at the Bema, either happened during this or just before it in heaven. Her eyes are popped. You do understand that. What's Bema? The judgment seat of Christ. Okay? It's important that we get this. Why would there be shedding of tears? The connection between Revelation, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. And I, I, I please, I want to dwell upon this a bit. Because there's no point having gone through all these times. Not to wonder, I, I mentioned it in part yesterday. Mentioned it in part yesterday. Verse 10. Yes. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me. Yes. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire, fire shall try every man's works of what sort it is. If any man's and work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall get a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, what I have not dissolved, he being saved, is it taking him through the tribulation? Or he just made up the train to heaven? Don't look at me. I'm throwing the word at you so that you can be awake, awake from your slumber. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved as though by fire. Now back up to the, uh, that original verse. That, that the, the first the verse before this one. If any man's work abide. No, no. But go, go to before, before that verse. Every no. man's work shall be made manifest. No, 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 no. And go the, yes. If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, Precious stones, what is common to all those three? You can't answer that, all right? 
What is common to those three? Precious stones don't, don't go through fire. One thing unique. Oh, come on, guys. No. They come from the rock. They come from the rock. Ushers, do your work, all right? They come from what? The rock. You mine gold from veins of the rock. Silver, you mine from veins of the rock. Precious stones don't just occur. You find them also in the rock. Build on the rock. The rock that never fails. All the other things that will be burnt, whether it's wood, whether it's stable, whether it's stubble. And I speak to you as one that is instructed of the Lord. It's in your hands how you build with what you build. It's not in anybody's hand to determine. Build on the rock. Build on the rock. Or build with the rock on the rock. Build with the rock on the rock. Because the rock of ages himself is the foundation. You can't build with another material. It will be strange. Are you with me? That's what Paul was bringing home to us. Any nature that is adverse to the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ is rejected. Oh, that God will help me and help you. Because we speak these things and, and, and we, we, cannot, we, cannot, we cannot see the analogy that the word of God is bringing out. To be able to condition ourselves in the manner in which we live our lives. As a servant, he remained a servant. Do I have a servant nature? Is my nature in full conformity with his nature? That's what's here. And if we are not doing that, I hope you can understand why I was talking about the issue of those who will be saved as though by fire. But let's just dig a little bit deeper in there. As you take, I, this is a long one, but I, I need you to follow through. Because if you can't connect the scriptures, you won't understand the full import of what the Lord is trying to take us through in taking us back to the basics. We've all moved away from the basics. Dele said, we have all drunk from the cup of Babylon. Begin to purge yourself of the wine of Babylon. I need to purge myself. I have taken notes from the Lord on the four principal areas that he has shown to me that I need to deal with. And I hope by the time we are done tomorrow, you will have taken concrete things that you need the Lord to help you with in your lives. Otherwise, this would just have been another ritual. Go on, please. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I was saying to you in bits yesterday, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, now you might say this is dealing to those who are, who are point men in the work that God has committed to us, in the service that he has given to us. No, every one of you is in the service of the Lord. As we have received mercy, yes. we faint not, mm -hmm. but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Now, when he says we faint not, he says we are not weary. We are not discouraged. We are not in any way set back by whatever circumstance. So we do not, we do not, we are not weary. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. I don't have the time, 
But when you read this in the message and the living Bible, it opens your eyes further to be able to break this down to your day-to-day -day living. Huh? Said, we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Yes? But if our gospel be heed, it is heed to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine upon, unto the them. The message translation says that their eyes have been blinded with the, with the, with the, with the fashionable God of this world. The fashionable God of this world has blinded their minds. And those are the distractions that we spoke to you about on Monday that you need to be careful not to be sucked into these things. Praise the Lord. Go on. All they have eyes for is the fashionable God of darkness. Oh. They think he can give Thank them. Thank you. All that they do what? They have eyes for. What do you have eyes for? What's attracting you now to be Beyonce? Ankara is being designed for Beyonce now to create styles that you will jump at. All that they have eyes for is a fashionable god of what? Of this world. Be careful. Just be simple, children of God. Amen? Be simple, children of God. Go on, please. They think he can give them what they want uh -huh. and that they won't have to bother believing a truth they can't see. Please write this down. Keep it on the... Let, write it down. Because you will see these things in the... That's why I said, take your time. These two chapters that we are reading, please, I beg you, Take it in the message, take it in the living Bible, and take it in New Living Translation. You will be better people for it. Because they will break these things down to day-to-day -day practical living. Praise the Lord. If you feel like sleeping, stand up. You are allowed. Because I'm not going to be under time pressure tonight. Okay? Praise the Lord. Huh? Finish it. They are stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that oh, shines with They Christ. are stone blind to the day spring. Day spring already is talking about a new day. A, day, a beginning of a day. Brightness of the message that shines with Christ. Who gives us the best picture of God we will ever get. So if you have no longer, I mean this is saying you are actually not seeing Jesus anymore. You are not looking at Jesus anymore. His fashion, the fashionable God of this world. Back up to uh, KJV, please. Let's move. Okay, five. Mm. For we preach not ourselves, yes. but Christ Jesus the Lord, mm. and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, yes. that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now you will see in the things that follow, don't go away from there. Because I need you to connect this 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to what Paul was saying in Ephesians chapter 1, 17 and 18, which I have continuously read to you. Because you must be able to connect these things and see them. He said, the excellency of the power of God that we said we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. The power that helps you, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, is the power that he's speaking to here, residing in you. If you will let him. If you will not shut him out. If you will let him. If you will not shut him out. Go on, please. We are troubled on every side. So, when you have that power residing in you, ready to help you, why would you be afraid of distress? Why would you be afraid of yes. the things that Paul then began to speak here? The things that we are all shy of. 
Things that we don't want to happen to us. When we sing the song, me, I know go suffer. When I can't come to fellowship because the road is bad, because I have no money, what is the distress? What are you letting the power of God that he says will help you, what are you allowing that power to do? You've taken your eyes away. Taking your eyes away. We are troubled on every side, not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted. Persecuted. We know we are not forsaken. Cast, Cast down. down. We are not destroyed. Always, Always bearing. bearing in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest where? In our bodies. This is the fragrance that this man is putting on. We, we, we spray uh, perfume upon ourselves, right? Don't worry, I'm not blaming you. Pastor does it also. All right? But the real perfume, the real perfume that God is talking about is this. Bearing in our bodies the suffering of Christ. May the Lord prepare all of us for this and give us the hearts to receive this and begin to change our ways and our thoughts on all the things that we see and we follow. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death walketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore, and therefore have I spoken. Yes. We also believe and therefore speak, mm. knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, the yet the inward man is renewed day it, by day. Yes. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why is Paul able to endure these things? Why is Paul able to endure these things? The power of God, yes. Don't miss the point here. Huh? The what? God bless you. The focus on the glory to come. I am leading to the blessed hope. Huh? The focus! Exactly as the Lord Jesus, the scripture said, he endured the cross, despising the shame. For what reason? You understand, looking at our God, that was preached on Tuesday. I'm trying to connect the dots now. I'm trying to connect the dots now. So that none of you, we can see the Lord himself orchestrated this. I never sat down with uh, Andrew to say this is what I'm going to talk about. Never sat down with, um, well, with, um, with, uh, with, um, Louis, I did tell him because I had had him speak about judgments. And it's only a tiny portion of what he, teach, what he taught when he spoke about judgments that he shared. Because judgments was a, a very important component of the totality of what we are speaking about. Praise the Lord. Yes? While we look not at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which this is This man, Retina, was focused on the glory to be revealed, on... Everything that God has spoken to in terms of the second coming of the Lord. The change that was going to come. 
Mortality being swallowed in immortality. Being changed completely. He was totally focused on it. In yes. this we groan, earnestly desiring to be closed upon with our house, which is from heaven. I asked you on Monday, and I asked you the same question. 2019 is ending. What has driven your life? What has been the thing that triggered your everyday living? And I'm asking you in the name of the Lord, make a change. Make a change. Understand what is here. Except you are focused on the Lord, focused on the blessed hope, is appearing, you won't be looking for him. And he's coming for those who are what? Those who are looking for him. You won't be looking for him. You'll be looking for Naira and Kobo. And everything that is associated to it. You'll be running after what does not count at the end of the day. Is Naira and Kobo not necessary? Oh, yes, what he said. Fear not, little children. It's your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. If I care for the birds of the air and the flowers better clothed than Solomon, why then are you spending your energy on that which will not profit you? Why? Ask yourself those questions. I'm struggling to make this as plain to everybody, including myself, as possible. Yes, please finish it. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Just, now, yes, yes, go on to, yes, go on, please. Now, he that had wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also had given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, and not, not by, by sight. sight. Mm. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body that and to be, be present, present with, with the, the Lord. Lord. Yes. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we, we may, may be accepted, accepted by of him. him. Yes. For we must all appear before the judgment seat Again, of Christ. this is what was being referred to in what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 10 to 15. This is the Bema seat, all right? This. Everyone must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done. Where? In his body. You saw all the things that were done in the body of Paul. That's why we took the pains to go through all of that. Then ask yourself, as I've had to ask myself, am I really in this race? Oh, our times may be different. This generation may be different. But do you know, at least in the north, northern part of this country, some Christians are going through this. That's why we pray that God should have mercy on the church in the south. Because the church in the south is asleep. Totally asleep. Misled and asleep. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That every man, everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. What is your work? What are you doing? What is your work? Good or bad? I had to take time to deal with this here because I pondered over and over in my heart about that marriage feast of the Lamb. It is a reality. It's not going to be changed. But I also believe, because I've sought scriptures and so on and so forth, 
the only thing that came to me was even in the natural setting. When awards are being given, most of the time awards are tied to what? They are tied to dinners. Oh. Oh. Awards in the physical are tied, mostly tied to dinners. Even though I don't have scriptures to back what I am saying, because I've searched, but I, I, I do believe that there is a connection between this judgment seat of Christ, where every man will receive awards, and also that marriage feast of the Lamb, which is taking place where? In heaven. And I'm urging all of us to be alive and to see what it is we need to set our attentions upon in these times and in these days that we are. Paul set his eyes on the glory that he was going to win. Therefore, he was able to persevere against all the issues that he, that he was facing. And that's where that crown of, for those who are patient, you receive the crown of joy. You know, the crown of joy has to do with evangelism. Uh, the second crown that we dealt with yesterday, nobody remembers. The, the crown of life for those who are patient in the face of trials. Praise the Lord. The end of the marriage supper completes the first phase of the Lord's coming. And now events transit very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. We see the Lord then coming with his throne. Uh, sorry, with, his, with, his, with, his, with the millions of his angels coming down to the face of the earth. There's a Lord that I've spoken but don't be distracted, please. The second coming of the Lord is in, it has two what? Two faces. The first face, the rapture. And that's all we have spoken about so far. But the moment you can see the transition in that same Revelation chapter 19, um, just read it a bit after verse 9. Verse 11. Yes. And I saw heaven opened. And, and I behold, saw heaven opened, yes. And behold, a white horse. I and, behold, a white horse, yes. And he that sat upon him was called faithful mm. and true. Yes. And in righteousness he doth judge yes. and make war. Yes. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Yes. And on his head were many crowns. Mm -hmm. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Yes. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. When Jude was quoting Enoch, said, I saw the Lord with what? Thousands and thousands and thousands of his saints. The armies of the Lord here are those who are redeemed who are taken up in the rapture. They come to join conflict with the Lord. Sorry, they, they come to join conflict under the Lord to destroy the works of the Antichrist. So when I said, where is it going to end for you? Are you going to be in the Lord's army? Or are you going to be on the side of those who are going to be judged? The choice is yours. We'll lay it open before you. That's why we are going through all of this. Please finish it. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that, that with it he should smite the nations. Remember what John saw. He saw the sword out of his mouth. It's the same one that he saw that is now at the head of the army. This scripture, have you finished it? 
And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both great, small and great. And I saw the beasts, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the earth, and against his army. Now for completeness, I'll give you other scriptures, but I, 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 like I said, don't put me under any time pressure. I am going to finish this one, because it's important. Amen? You will see the fulfillment of that which was spoken in Psalm, Psalm number 2. The kings of this world, they do what? They take counsel against the Lord and against his word. This is the fulfillment of that scripture. Now I want to show you other dimensions. Zechariah chapter 14. While you are looking at, Je at the book of Joel, from verse uh, chapter 3 from verse 4. These two, you will see how God had crafted all of these things right from the beginning of times. The one who says, I am the first and the last. Before it was, I spoke about it. Yes? Zechariah 14, 1. Yes? Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Yes? And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Yes? And the city shall be taken, and the house is rifled. The scripture you read earlier on said, birds went, to, they went around to announce. Here you can see it's the one who is ordering the birds. And I will show you in the other scripture that it's not really the birds, it's the angels that he used. But go on, go on. And the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Mm -hmm. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it towards the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled be from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. The Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with him. Joel chapter 3. Uh, take it from verse, um, verse, verse 4. Joel 3 from verse, verse 4. 4. Yes. Yeah. And what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, mm. and all the coast of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Mm -hmm. Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that he might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Remember that Louis spoke to the scripture that I will gather them from the four corners of what? Go on. And I'll sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord hath spoken it. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Theda caused thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. You can see, all of these things have been spoken to. The nations are going to be gathered. All the heathen are going to be brought there, to that valley of Jehoshaphat. Yes, go on. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, 
get you down. For the press is full, the fats overflow. For their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the, for Lord, the, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. I think that uh, that I was uh, referring to by Brother Derek Prince actually had to do with the valley of decision. Uh, talks, I don't remember the title. I think it had to do with the valley of decision by Derek Prince. An old, old, very, very old, very, very old, very, very old. But all of these things tell one thing so that you don't get lost. The second part of the coming of the Lord has to do with his physical appearance when he hits Mount Olives and all the nations of the world at the tail end of that day, the trouble, the, 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 day, of, uh, the day of the trouble of Jacob. At the tail end of it, this is when this is happening. And the thrones that are going to be set happen right after this. The thrones that we spoke to happened after this. Now, the Bible describes the massive number of believers returning with the Lord Jesus Christ as the clouds of heaven. And I show you several scriptures to that effect. If you go to the book of Daniel, uh, hmm. Did I give you that, Daniel? Daniel 7, 9. Okay. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fairy flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fairy stream is issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions... The Son of Man came with what? The clouds, the clouds, of, clouds heaven. of heaven. That's what I'm looking for. The Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. And when the scripture is referring to the clouds of heaven, it's actually speaking about who? The saints of God. The saints of God. I'll show you more scriptures to that point. In the day that the, um, Jesus was brought before the high priest, in Matthew chapter 26, 64. Jesus Listen said to his confession. Thou Jesus said, said, yes, thou hast said. Nevertheless, I say unto you, mm -hmm. hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and mm. coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, when Jesus spoke this, he was merging two scriptures together. He was merging Daniel 7, 13, which we just read, and Psalm 110, verse 1. Verse 1. Yes. The, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit, sit at thou my at my right hand yes. until I make thine enemies thy footstool. When you combine this with what we read in Daniel 7 13, you will see the statement that Jesus made in Matthew 26 64 that made the high priest mad. The high priest understood what he was saying. That this guy is saying he is the Lord and is the one who is coming to judge the world. The clouds of heaven. I wanted you to understand. Each time the scriptures speak about the clouds of heaven, who is it that it was referring to? Mark twenty four thirty. Mark twenty four thirty. Matthew twenty four thirty. Sorry, Matthew twenty four thirty. Thank and you. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Yes. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in what? The clouds the of clouds heaven. of heaven, with power and with great glory. Every other scripture that we read in, in Zechariah, what we read in, um, in, um, in um, not Joel, Zechariah and then in, in Revelation spoke about the saints of God. He coming with the saints. These scriptures speak about him coming in the clouds. Necessarily, the clouds must be referring to the saints that came with him. When Jesus 
You'll find that, we won't read this one. In Mark 13, 26, the same is used. Luke 21, 27, the same is used. The Son of Man coming within a cloud with power and with great glory. So we've gone to these details to let you understand the two phases of that second coming of the Lord and more important for you to decide which one do you want to belong to. It's in your hands how you live your life now, how you live your life today. The army returns clothed in pure white linen. This army in heaven that John writes about are the clouds of heaven which Daniel also saw in the vision. This is the cloud of heaven which the Lord Jesus told the high priest was, that, was returning, that he was returning with. He is coming back with his bride. He is coming back with his bride. But this time, as soldiers in his army to execute judgment upon the ungodly, to put it in the words of, of, uh, of Jude. Now, God is setting all this backdrop that I have gone through to bring something home to us. Those who are in the Sunday school teaching class last Sunday, those who are also there in the, when Louis was speaking, they will catch this. The truth of the Lord's coming for the church is so powerful that the Bible tells us to comfort one another with this hope. In a time of sorrow, when experiencing the loss of loved ones, the loss is only temporary as there will be a uniting with the Lord when the Lord comes. This is the blessed hope. This is the blessed hope. Now let's press further into the blessed hope. And um, I will then come to that statement that was made at that Bible study that should radically change all of you who are scroll, who are scroll carriers. Amen? We don't despise the scroll. But believe me, the scroll is not the message. The message is Jesus Christ himself. The message is the Lord Jesus Christ. Fail to focus on the Lord and you are focusing on the times you risk being so, so excited by the times that the ingredients of living a life that will conform your nature to Jesus Christ, you left it behind. I love you, that's why I'm saying it. When I choose to teach the scrolls, I will teach the scrolls. But I focus your attention on the blessed hope. Let's talk about the blessed hope. Turn with me to Titus. Praise the Lord. Are you tired? You can't be tired because I am not tired. Praise the Lord. Let's go on to Titus. Titus 2.13. Yes. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great I want you to see this combination here. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the living God himself, is a blessed hope. Combine that with the truth of his promise that I am coming again. You have something to keep you excited. Add to that the assurance of the wedding feast. Oh boy. Those three things should keep every believer excited. We will not joy as those who joy in the day of harvest. Not the amount of money, not the amount of crops that you yield and so on and so forth. We will joy in the blessed hope, in the assurance of the blessed hope. And that's what I'm giving to every one of us tonight as we begin to push to the end here. Because in the fourth stanza of the four stages that I showed you concerning 2020 vision, distance was the last point. I'm simply telling you the end point. The end point of the distance that we are walking and it's not far away. 
You've been taught through these five, six days to keep your attention focused on the right thing. Otherwise, you will misjudge the distance and you will walk away not knowing that you have passed where you are supposed to be passing. Praise the Lord. Now, 1 Corinthians 1, 7 and Colossians 3, 4, quickly. So that you come behind the no gifts, mm -hmm. waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, mm. then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Every time that Paul spoke, the blessed hope was at the center of what he was speaking. The blessed hope drove this man's living. The glory associated to the coming of the Lord drove this man's life. Because he knew he was innately logged into it. That when he comes, am I not only going to be changed, I'm going to come with him in that mighty train. Oh, that the Lord will open all our hearts. I have prayed that the Lord will give each of us an encounter with him through these words that you have to change your outlook and your passions. Then you can turn away from the accolades of men and pursue that which is crucial for your lives. Looking for the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming is a blessed hope. It is not just a hope, but it is a blessed hope. Following the church's, the church's gathering with the Lord in the, sorry, following the church's gathering with the Lord in the marriage supper of the Lamb, it is a blessing to be called also to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is a double blessing for those who are waiting for the Lord's return. The blessing of the blessed hope, the blessing of anticipating and being part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. All believers, every believer should be living with the blessed hope and the excitement of the marriage supper every day. Every day. Where your treasure is, talk to me. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If your treasure is the blessed hope and the coming of the Lord, your heart is going to be there. It's a key point in all that we are saying, all that we will pray for tonight. That you recognize what true treasure is. Paul recognized it. The men of old recognized it. That's why they were willing to suffer and take on all the distractions. All the crocodiles that are in the pool that they may be able to get to the other end and inherit the glory of the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second coming is not just a doctrine. It is to be a living reality in a believer's life. If this reality is not in a person's heart, it is a sign that something is radically wrong. So wake up, my brethren, and search your heart. And recorrect, recalibrate, what should be the center of your passion? I've said it, repeating Pastor Dilly, Christians are the worst liars with the songs that they sing. Because we sing it, but we don't really mean it, and our lives are not saying it. And we need to ponder as we transit this year, going to the next, checking what is the treasure, what is really the treasure. Sin and the love of this world will kill the blessed hope. Wrong doctrine about the blessed hope also deadens the reality of the Lord's coming for the, for the church and the subsequent marriage supper of the Lamb. When you hear, oh, let Jesus delay a little so I can enjoy myself. 
You have never had that before. 1 John 3.3. 3. And every man that had this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Yes. Every man that had this hope in, in, in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. You will see eight different things that are tied to the blessed hope. In the scripture that you just took from the center, but let's read the whole thing in that Titus chapter 2. Instead of just taking the, uh, the verse, the, just take the whole portion, uh, take it from verse... Hmm. Take it from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. For the grace of God that, that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Teaching us teaching that. Teaching us that what? Number denying one. Denying ungodliness. Denying. Number one is what? I want to hear denying what? Denying what? Number two. Denying worldly lust. Yes. Number three. We should live soberly. Live soberly. Number four. Five. Yes, go on. In this present world. Looking for that blessed looking hope. Looking for that blessed hope. And glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in the book of Hebrews that it says Jesus Christ is going to appear for those who are what? Who are what? Who are looking for him. If you are not looking for him, you will miss it. That's why I'm emphatically saying to myself and saying to you, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Change your treasure today from your bank account, from that fantabulous house that you are looking for, for that husband or wife that you are looking for. Let your treasure be the blessed hope, the coming of the Lord, and the what? The marriage supper of the Lamb. That is the treasure that will keep your heart focused on the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? Change your treasure. Change your treasure. Change your treasure. Tell your neighbor, change your treasure. The blessed hope is a spiritual life to a believer, and without it, worldliness steps in and chokes the world in a person's life. What we just read in Titus 2, 11 to 14, the blessed hope is in the very middle of the admonition to live a godly life. It's a composite part of it. This verse was placed there. To show how important the blessed hope is to our spiritual life. False doctrines do not teach the reality of the blessed hope. False doctrines rob spiritual power from the believers. These types of teachings create weak believers because of the false teaching about the Lord's coming. I have unfolded this to you in depth today. The Bible tells us what to do about waiting for the return of the Lord. We are to wait with patience for his return. Just as he spoke it in the book of James, the husband man does what? Waiteth, Waiteth how? Patiently. The husband man waiteth patiently. As I begin to wrap this off now, Give me Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, take it from 9 to 11 and then 18 to 19. Verse 9. Yes. But beloved, mm -hmm. we are persuaded better things of you. Yes. And things that accompany salvation, mm -hmm. though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Yes. Which ye have showed towards his name. Mm -hmm. In that ye have ministered to the saints mm -hmm. and do minister. Mm -hmm. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence. Now you will see something that he begins to speak about here. And whoever is leading prayers tonight as we go forward, we'll remember to pray to God to bless those who furnish this house with these new chairs. It's a group of individuals that put themselves together. This is in the church. The church didn't buy this. Inherent in what you heard him here, the Hebrews were getting weary of what? 
They were getting weary of what? Oh, you read it now. Just, okay, cast an eye. They were getting weary of what? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work yes. and labor of love. Yes. Love which, which you have shown. shown towards his name in that you did what? Minister. You ministered to the saints. Oh, what you did to me now? And you want me to share with you. What is not enough for me to spend? You want me to share with you. Hello. Did you hear me? I've, in, I've translated what I said. So that you can understand what happened in Acts chapter 2. They were driven by considerations of this nature. That in the times of difficulty, the Hebrew church was in the depth of persecution, hardship. So much so that Paul had to speak to the Macedonians. Well, remember when he was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9? And I'm saying this because we see what's ahead. Amen? The Hebrew church was in the death of judgment and persecution that things were very hard. That this began to set upon them. The care for one another was rapidly going away. You will see it in the days to come. But I have warned you. As the Lord warned me too, by the way. If he didn't warn me, I won't be warning you. So bad was it in that time that Paul had to raise what? Offerings for the comfort of the saints that were there in Jerusalem. And Paul then had to be admonishing the Hebrews. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name. In that, towards who are you doing it? You think it is for Chudi or for Gina? It is for the Lord. That you have shown towards his name in that you have done what? And you continue to do the same. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Are you gaining wisdom here? Are you preparing your hearts for tomorrow? Finish it. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope mm -hmm. unto the end. Mm. 18. That by two immutable things, it is impossible, yes, for God to lie. Yes, we might have a strong consolation. We who have, have a strong consolation who have fell, who have run, or who have fled for refuge, and laid, and laid, laid upon the hope set before you is doing what. Come on, guys. The hope set before you is doing what? Is running. Grab it. Grab it. What's making it look like he's running? I showed you from Daniel 12 1 on Monday. The forces of darkness are doing everything possible to thwart the plan of God. Oh, it's not going to happen. Stop wasting your time. It's not going to happen. Stop wasting your time. But it's going to happen. Hell cannot change it. Don't be drawn into the deceit of hell. The Lord will help every one of us. There's nobody who is not involved in this one that I just said. It's not going to be in this one. I say again, nobody who is not going to be touched in this one. Paul put it in another way, another way. He put it in another way. He said, let not the bowels of your compassion be what? Be shot. Praise the Lord. Now I hope I have not made you heavy. 
I have told you the truth. As the Lord told me and warned me. The Bible places nothing in the way deterring the Lord's coming for the church. That's why I said all that hell is doing can't stop the Lord coming for his church. You are the only one who can distract yourself if you focus on the wrong thing. Now listen to this. Listen to this good. I should have extracted this portion and put it in the screen. We are to be aware of world events in the light of Bible prophecy. But our anticipation should be for the blessed hope. Did you hear that? Be aware, but that's not my focus. My anticipation is what? The blessed hope. Focusing on world events rather than the blessed hope can hinder your faith and often create fear. That's why we don't get into the details of what is coming anymore. We know. But we will not bring you into fear. We will rather give you the solutions so that you can stand and be strong to be an overcomer. Praise the Lord. It is given to some of us to know by being exposed to the macroeconomic system all over the world and the inner workings of the government we see. But for your sakes, we'll give you the solutions for you to stand. That your hearts be not troubled. Because in Jesus Christ you have peace and you have victory because you overcame. Praise the Lord. Focusing on world events rather than the blessed hope can hinder one's faith and often create fear. No matter what happens in the world, we are to stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming. This is the anchor of your soul in the time of trouble. Did you hear me? Don't you forget that. I'm rounding up now. I, did not, I chose not to go through the latter part of this because we've gone through it in different places. All that Paul spoke to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 give a very nice picture of the two faces of the coming of the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul deals with the first face. He explains the Lord is going to return for all those who died. And then they which are alive at that time will be caught up with him in the air. And then when he gets into second, first, Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 5, he deals with the second face of the Lord, of the Lord's coming. He addresses the day of the Lord. During the day of the Lord, Jesus is returning with his church to fight the battle for Jerusalem. Are you clear? Do you understand? If anybody asks you the reason of your hope, can you give it? Now let's get up and talk to the Lord. Joel, I mean Noel, sorry, I've given you another name now. Noel, praise the Lord. Let's now go to the Lord in this 15 minutes. Remember the things. Change your what? Treasure. Change your what? Treasure. Amen. This shall we just rise. I will just give a, a succinct recap of all that we have gone through. Let all those that were sleeping be awake now so that we will have a very good framework to pray for the 15 that we have. In the last six days I see there is a, there's a major attack against the false doctrines around eschatology. That's what the last six days has been because a lot of false doctrines are going around. There is no judgment. There is no rapture. All kinds of things. And that's why uh, that is have gone back again to the basics of the faith to give us the right framework so that we know what we believe. We know where we stand. Because for you to engage in battle, you must have a base. You must have a framework. 
and we have been brought back to base. Tell your neighbor, say, we have come back to base. Hallelujah. Um, so, another summary I would give, I'll try to just make it very punchy, is that we have been admonished, first of all, to live right. And then to focus on Jesus. Live right, focus on Jesus, so that we can make the rapture. So let's repeat, let's, let's say it together. Live right, focus on Jesus, and make the rapture. I'm building up. In short, what we have been told in all these six days is that the great tribulation is not an alternative. You shouldn't even consider it. So, you know, I used to ask myself, rapture is a motivation. If there was no rapture, I will just come and leave us alike and just enter the great tribulation. Yes, it's basic common sense. Why do I... <laughs> Just eh, so there's no, I will just we are going. I will be prepare myself for it. But what we have been told is not even something you can go through. So don't plan for it. It's not an alternative. Are we clear on that? Are we aligned? Are we on the same page? Okay. Then we have been admonished. Make a change in your lifestyle. Now we are moving from the esoteric realm to reality. Our fathers are telling us to make adjustments. The way we are living and from what they are seeing, if we continue like this, there will be a problem in 2020. Tell anybody say adjust. Don't just say it. These are the things that are going to lead us into prayer. Our lifestyle, we should live a rapturable lifestyle. There is a lifestyle that those who have this hope, that's how they live. The Bible talked about Abraham. They said he, he, he thought of a city whose builder and maker was God. And because of that, he didn't build houses. He dwelt in tent. Because he knew that there was, he didn't want anything to hold him down on earth. Your lifestyle will determine your focus. There's how to live a focused lifestyle. Number one, don't compartmentalize your life. This is church. This is business. Don't compartmentalize your life. My life is one. Everything about me is God. My job is God. As I'm going to work, I'm going to work for God. I hear people talk about my business, my wife, my children, my career. When you live a rapturable lifestyle, you own nothing. All that you own belongs to God. So that all that God owns belongs to you. That way you become a precious commodity. And, you know, as daddy was talking, God gave me another illustration about the rapture. Imagine your house is about to be burnt down by fire. And they ask you, you can only pick what your hands can pick. Will you run into that house and be picking your dustbin? Huh? Okay. Or will you run into that house and go and try to be uprooting your toilet? Eh? The earth is about to be destroyed. And God has to come and pick his treasures. That's why he told us, I don't know you. It's not that they are not his children. It's not that some of them they are his property. But property past property. The rapture is for the precious things. Me, I will just go and take my ATM card. I don't know about you. 
I will take my dollar ATM. I'm not going to gather any nonsense. I don't need all those boxes. I take my dollar ATM card. I will take my international passport. I will walk out. You can burn the rest. Light flight. That's what God is coming for in the rapture. Do you understand the rapture now? Where God is because the earth has been doomed for destruction. We all know it's going to be burnt by fire. But God does not want this precious seed to even see evil. He has no plans for them to even witness. You know, you can. What happened to Lot? What happened to Lot? Lot was in Sodom, but his righteous soul was vexed. He was a righteous man in Sodom. God so, does not want his precious jewel to even see the evil. So he has to come and take them. Because he loves you. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus Christ. And live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that we lose. you take your eyes from Jesus you begin to lose life you begin to die your oil begins to drain don't take your eyes off Jesus you have to look at him in your rising you have to look at him in your going just as said, choose yet this day whom you will serve as for me and my house we shall serve the Lord he said, write them upon the tablets of your heart. He said, write them upon the door front. Write them as you go into the market. You still want me to tell you to pray? You're looking at me. Come on now, put your hand upon your heart. Put your hand upon your heart. The Bible says, cut your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. There is a contention for your heart. Your heart is the place of focus. God needs your heart. God dwells in your heart. The heart of man is supposed to be the throne room of God. And if your heart is not full of light, if your heart is not for God, then Satan, it becomes the seat of Satan. Now begin to pray, my heart will not be the seat of Satan. My heart will be the throne of God. My heart will be the throne of God. Oh God, flood our heart with light. Flood, flood our heart with light. Refocus our heart. When God wants to change a man, he will change his heart. God took the heart of man from Nebuchadnezzar. And he gave him the heart of a beast. And a man left the palace. And entered into the bush. And he began to live with animals. And behave like animals. Now I begin to pray. That God will give you the heart of God. God, I want to have your heart. I want to have your heartbeat. Jesus prayed. He said, I and my father are one. It means the heartbeat of God was the heartbeat of Jesus. Their heart was beating at the same frequency. Their heart was beating at the same rate. Sanctify my heart. Now begin to pull down every mindset. Every stronghold every mental pattern every imagination everything you have imbibed consciously or unconsciously as a result of your interface with the world begin to pull them down begin to pull them down begin to cast down arguments some people will be saying hey, hey, this thing the pastor is saying 
You see all this uh, theology. Look, uh, uh, they are, I, I, when I came for this fasting meeting, I came so that they will pray for all my problems to go. Those are arguments. Begin to pull down those arguments. They are distracted. Sorry to tell you, your problems are distractions. <laughs> your problems are distractions. The disappointments are distractions. The rejection you are suffering is a distraction. Looking unto Jesus. The failure of your business is a distraction. <laughs> the failure of anything around you is a disappointment is a distraction. Let Jesus be. Those are the things he's using. Those are the things used to distract us. Disappointment, failure. In short, since the beginning of this year, nothing has worked. In short, I don't even understand what is going on. In short, and you just keep opening your mouth and saying the wrong things instead of declaring the words of the Lord. That by his stripes I have been healed. Declare the word of the Lord. That through the water, through the fire, the Lord is with me. Declare his word. Declare his position. I am not afraid. For God has not given me the spirit of fear. But the spirit of power. The spirit of love. And a sound mind. Jesus told us. He said in the world you will have tribulation. So why is it strange? Those are, those are strongholds we are carrying. Jesus told us. The word of the Lord says. In the world you will have tribulation. But he also said. He said, I've given you peace. I have given you peace. Come on now, let's, let's get that peace tonight. Leave this place tonight. Drop all the burdens. They are distractions. Jesus knew the burdens are distractions. And that's why he said, come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You can't carry the burden. Come on. Can somebody drop the burden here tonight? No money for January. Drop the burden here tonight. Just forget about it because the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That should be the focus. Not your needs, not your wants. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the Gentiles are looking for shall be added unto you. Our problem is that we have little faith. Ha. You see, little faith is when you are at the level of still just for your needs. Little faith is what you need for your needs. Just begin to pray right now. And the only way for your faith to grow is for God to throw more challenges at you. So get ready. More challenges are coming. The essence is for your faith to grow. God told the man, he said, push the wall. When the man was about to push the wall, he thought that the wall, his expectation is that the wall was going to move. And he kept pushing. He kept pushing. He kept pushing. But the wall did not move. He said, ah, God, you have deceived me. Then God told him, look at your muscles. Many times the focus of God is different from our focus. Let's begin to pray for that alignment today. If such a person did not hear God, Tell him, say, look at your muscles. He will believe that God, 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 God is a liar. As I told me to push the world, the world didn't move. As far as I'm concerned, all we have gotten from day one till now is an invitation. It is information. Rich information. For one thing to happen in our lives. It is an invitation to your personal altar. Hey, the place of sacrifice. The place where you will die. You will die on the altar. And the altar is the place where the fire will consume you. He said we should present our bodies as living sacrifice. All the information you have gathered from the one till now, it will not change you. I'm just telling you. You have been well informed. You have to go and do the work. You have to go and meet with God <laughs> in the secret place of thunder where men's hearts are changed and transformed. So tonight, begin to pray for divine assistance in your, on your altar in the place of personal prayer and consecration.
pray for divine assistance. That's what we need. That's what will create the change. What we have received is information to draw us. It's an invitation to draw each and every one of us to meet God in the place of thunder. To meet God in the secret place where the hearts of men are changed. Where men are transformed from being human to being divine. Where, the, where humanity will encounter divinity. And then from death, humanity will put on divinity. Sonship is the target of God. All right. Our time is up. But I've fed you with adequate prayer. Labor tonight in the altar. That is where your heart will be recalibrated. You have been given the tools to go and be what God wants you to be. Use it for good. Let's everybody just lift up their hands and just pray for all those those righteous company that came together to provide these seats for us. Let's just thank God for them. Let's just thank them that as they have watered, that God will water them. If there is any place they are supposed to be sitting and they are still standing, God leads us to a place of sitting. You know, in the spirit, it is the reverse. In the natural, you learn to sit, walk, and then stand. But in the spiritual, you start from walking. <laughs> you start from, it's the reverse. The end of it is sitting. That's why Jesus sat on the throne. When he had conquered, he was sitting. Let's pray that God will position them to sit. Let's pray that the blessings of God that flows from it, the throne where he's seated will flow to them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for blessing your people with the word. Prophetic insight. The word without error. To put us on the right path and deliver us from apostasy. To recalibrate our minds and bring us back on track. There be as many of us that have gone far. Lord, we stretch out the rod of the shepherd to bring them home. In the name of Jesus. Many that have strayed in their hearts, O oh God, and are physically present. <laughs> Father, tonight, let there be a spiritual surgery in the name of Jesus. Some hearts are weak. We want to pray that those hearts will be strengthened tonight. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you that have begun this good work, you will complete it. We ask for supernatural strength upon your people. We ask for ability to reflect, to meditate, to assimilate in the place of fellowship, the things that we have heard, that it will have an outworking in our life. Lord, I will not enter 2020 ill prepared. Lord, you are speaking because all you need is one word, and a man who has gone astray will find his way back home. Every prodigal, wherever they are, we speak to your heart today, come home. I say, come home. In the north, I say, come home. In the east, I say, come home. In the west, I say, come home. Come to your senses. Come to Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your servants who have blessed us richly all these days. And Lord, as we climb and ascend this mountain of deliverance, oh God, tomorrow will be more spectacular. More encounters tomorrow. That at the end of this gathering, your people will go back. They will return in the power of the Spirit. The Bible talks about Jesus. After he had fasted and prayed for 40 he returned in the power of the Spirit. Let that be our portion tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.